All right, we had a bunch of uh, people jaywalking. It's a thing in Salt Lake. If you live in downtown Salt Lake, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I had to literally stop in the middle of the road to let these people cross because- Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here. And in today's video, we're finally going to be reviewing the all wheel drive version of the Volkswagen ID4. First and foremost though, a huge shout out and thank you to the strong Volkswagen here in downtown Salt Lake for giving me some time with this ID4. I'm gonna put a link to their inventory in the description down below so you guys can check out what they have currently. And something that's awesome about the strong Volkswagen here in downtown Salt Lake is they have a lifetime powertrain warranty and they also have a VIP package that includes stuff like free car washes and free paintless dent repair as well. If you have any questions about any of it whatsoever, just ask for Alex. Like I said, link to their inventory in the description down below. Now, something I want to mention about the ID4 is it will be getting a slight refresh for the 2023 model year. It doesn't change a whole lot with the ID4. The biggest changes are some stuff to the colors you can put inside of the car from, well, that was a very weird way to say that. Basically, interior colors changing. And then there is going to be a change to the center console so instead of having the funky armrests you guys will see in today's video there is just going to be like a regular center console there so not huge changes but changes nonetheless and then also as always if you're gonna save time on the next time purchase car link to my car buying guide in the description down below let's get into the review So let's go over the system here for the ID4. We have an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack paired to a dual electric motor setup. Total system output is 295 horsepower and then 339 pound feet of torque with range being 245 miles. Pretty dang impressive. That is strange. That, that. This is interesting. Normally this is where I go over the front end and the lights, but I would like to mention that as soon as I get out of the car, it automatically shuts it off, even if I leave the key in the car. It's like a Volkswagen Audi thing. But also, if you want to see more content like this, I'd recommend that you subscribe because I post reviews every single day. So uh, subscribe. Anyways, going over the front end, you guys can see here with the distinctive lines on either side of the hood. And then coming down, well, you guys just gotta trust me. We got <laughs> these uh, cool daytime running lights and notice how we've got like the lights that goes right into the grill, which is pretty cool with the Volkswagen logo front and center. And then you guys can see parking sensors here down below as well. And you know what? I think that the ID4 is a pretty good looking car. Popping to the side here, our tire and wheel setup is 235, 50, 20 in the front, and then 255, 45, 20 in the rear. And then you guys can see the design on the wheels. I think it looks pretty cool. You've got like the blades basically pointed towards the center. They are on some like blacked out wheel trim as well. So it, it, it all kind of comes together. And then notice with the fender flares, how they're pretty flush with the bodywork. And then we have our all wheel drive Pro S badge right there. And then we take a few steps back. You can see that cladding is all along the bottom portion. I think this is pretty interesting, that line there at the top, but there you go. So here is the key fob for the ID4. You guys can see the Volkswagen logo there on the back. We've got the lock function, the unlock function, and the opening here for the hatch. So we're gonna press that and it'll pop right open. Notice we have a cargo cover built in, which is pretty cool. And then from a storage space perspective, I mean, it's actually excellent. Got the charger that does come with the ID4, and then we have a little cargo cover here. You can see a little bit more storage space just underneath. There's another strap. We have, oh, that was bad. I was gonna say we have a strapception, but apparently I gotta start lifting a little bit more so I don't drop stuff. Wow, yeah, interesting. Don't know if that's gonna interest you guys in the video, but anyways, that's all for the rear. And if you guys are wondering when you're done, there's a little button right up there in the corner that you can press and then it'll just pop that right back down. Now let's finish things up with the rest of the rear of the ID4. So you guys can see with the taillights, I think those look pretty sweet and how it all connects again into the Volkswagen logo. ID4 down below. And then there are more parking sensors here at the bottom portion. And then something I wanna mention is the charging port here. So just gotta press it and it'll pop right open. This does have DC fast charging as well. That's what that little clip is for. Most uh, cars are you know, starting, electric cars at least, are starting to come out with DC fast charging, but overall with the exterior styling, I, th I think it's really good looking. So here's a door panel in the rear. I love the brown with this particular interior. It's definitely unique looking, that is for sure. And then notice with the piano black trim here with our nice little window control. And then here are these seats here with this ID4, notice perforated all down the center portion and then popping in. Ooh, legroom. Headroom's great. And then notice we got some 
USBs, we got some vents there, ID4, and like I said, they are reworking this whole center console situation for the 23 model year. And I got some cup holders here, and then I guess we have the pass-through as well. These seats are really comfortable, by the way. Volkswagen's doing a good job with their seats. Let's head to the front. Now, before we go to the front door panel, I do want to mention, you guys probably noticed when I open up the doors, you have the electronic release. It's not like a traditional handle, which is definitely unique. And then again, we've got that like brown leather trim, which is pretty cool. Here's a quick look at the mirrors. And we've got normal stuff like our window controls, for example. And you guys can see with the adjustments for the mirrors, and they do power fold in as well. And then we got the opening there for the trunk. And you guys probably noticed that you've got this little rear button. That's to control the rear windows because, well, we've got to be minimalist with the controls. Anyways, here are the front seats. Notice it says ID on it, and then you can see perforated there, and then also down at the bottom portion as well. All of our power adjustments, and then notice memory seat function as well. And I think that's a massage seat function. We'll check later. Pedal layout down below. We got all of our light controls here, and then notice with the trim there on the dash. Let's pop in. Now before we go over the steering wheel, I do want to mention that yes, this does in fact have massaging seats, and yes, it is very nice. But anyways, you got a lot of trim all around, and then you guys can see the stitching there on the center portion. We have Volkswagen's new style of airbag cover, which, yeah, I really like it actually. Voice uh, command control, which looks super similar to Volvo's little face that they have on theirs, which is kind of interesting. And then we got other practical controls like the volume and all that kind of stuff, controls for the center stack. And then we do have our cruise control as well. Now I do have to put my foot on the brake um, for it to be fully on and I actually have to pop it into drive for me to be able to turn the steering wheel to show you guys we have a turn signal stock. And we have a windshield wiper stock and there's a steering wheel. Now we have this gauge cluster here. It's pretty interesting because it's actually mounted on the steering wheel. So like if I move the steering wheel, the gauge cluster moves with the steering wheel, which is pretty interesting. But it shows you all the information you need to see, like, hey, how fast you're going. And then also look at that, 231 miles of range with 86%. Uh, I've been talking about this on and off for like the last few months. The EPA ratings on range are never accurate. It seems like every single EV is able to get better range than what the EPA rates them at. I don't know why it is like that. But um, anyways, the next weird thing is, this is how you get into gear. It's this little like twist thing. So like, for example, if the camera will focus on it, if I wanna go into drive like that, reverse like that, and then park, push it in. So yeah, kind of interesting. Now here's the center infotainment screen. If we pop it into reverse, not drive, you guys can see you've got a backup camera with your directory lines that turn the steering wheel and then you got a little view there because again, it has parking sensors front and rear. And then moving from that to the rest of the infotainment system. Uh, overall, I actually like the infotainment system because it's pretty intuitive uh, with the different controls. So like, I like the fact that just pressing the vehicle and then like can go into exterior lights, for example, and you can just change different settings on it, which is pretty cool. And I love how you can just like spin the car around I don't know, I think that's funny. And also like you can turn that off because you know, sometimes I don't like that feature because like I'll accidentally like kick my foot underneath and then it'll open. I'm like, no, I did not mean for that to happen. And so, yeah, I, I think they've done a good job and I, I, I don't know, I, I like the whole like spin animation with it. And I also like how accessible the climate stuff is. So for example, I can just press that climate menu, menu pops up. I can turn on the heated seats if I want. You got the heated steering wheel as well. And then like the fan speed, pretty easy with that whole setup as well and then you know, with the temperature and everything. And so, yep, so far pretty good. And then we do have some like kind of analog-ish controls down below. So like, they're not true buttons. It's kind of like a little like pad basically that you press. Same thing here with like the climate stuff down below. As you can see, it's definitely interesting. And also like if you just hover your finger, like, because it's just touchpad, you just hover your fingers on this stuff and it automatically pulls it up on the screen. So yeah, very interesting. You got like the safety stuff too but the one that you guys probably want to know is about the drive mode so you press that and then we do have some different modes we got eco comfort sport we've got our traction mode and then we have our custom mode as well it's got the cool animations and there you go so since everything's built into the touchscreen pretty much we've got some vents down below here and then we've got this center console with some cup holders basically and then we have the previous version of the rest of the center console so first off wireless phone charging pad with some usbs and then we have like this little cover thing for the cup holder section with some armrests. Uh, if you don't like this setup, then wait for 2023 and this whole thing will be gone. And then we've got the glove box here and you guys already saw with the material use on the dash. And then up top, it does have this giant panoramic sunroof. The control for it is just this little slidey pad. Again, lots of 
Lots of like slidey things here in the ID4. It's definitely interesting. Now here's a window sticker. I forgot to mention the charge time. So 7.5 hours to get a full charge if you use a 240 volt. Um, pretty much everything is standard equipment. There are some options that you can add to this, um, like the exterior color. And then this one has the gradient package with the 20 inch wheels and all that and the protection package. Um, but you guys see the base price there. We'll go over the total MSRP in a second. Warranty information is pretty interesting. So four year, 50,000 mile on the new vehicle warranty. And then there's a high volt or high voltage system warranty, four year, 50,000 mile. And then there's the high voltage battery, eight year, 100,000 mile. And so like they're super specific with the warranties. Anyways, $52,585 is the total MSRP on this one. Let's see how it drives. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility over the hood, both of the mirrors, then throughout the rest of the rear. And let's set off. So we are setting off here in the ID4. Now I have it in the B mode. So you, so basically shift down for D and then you put it again and that'll put you in B mode. This is the one pedal drive. Whenever I drive fully electric vehicles, I prefer to drive them in their one pedal drive format because it just feels like this just feels right <laughs> with uh, fully electric vehicles. Um, so first off again, that massage definitely coming in clutch. Oh, of course I get unlucky and we, uh, don't get to go through the light, sadly. Okay, so continuing along here with the ID4. Oh, I guess that if I say ID4, it. I guess that has to do with the voice command system because now it's asking me to say something. Ah! I don't know what's happening. So, um, we'll just pretend like that didn't happen. <laughs> um, it, I love how this easy this is to drive. Now, I've actually driven uh, an ID4 before. Uh, just the uh, rear wheel drive version though. I think it's interesting that they made this uh, rear wheel drive based like it, Typically, you know most crossovers will be front wheel drive based nowadays, but so it's so it's definitely interesting But I think that that's gonna make it so the driving dynamics are gonna be just better overall. So <laughs> Instant power instant torque that's the thing you love about electric cars No, that was just a wimpy acceleration But I wanted to see like how it felt in the regular mode because there is a substantial difference in this car between regular and sport mode just like most uh, electric vehicles That regen is so aggressive, which I really appreciate because I hate it when cars uh, electric cars have regen that's like not super aggressive because then it like if I if I want regen it's like I want regen I don't want it to be kind of regen. So I definitely appreciate that uh, seat comfort i kind of talked about this earlier but it's actually really good like the padding on these seats uh, it's solid it looks like there's a little brown instead of the perforations too like the uh brown that you see on the dash it's kind of like behind the perforations that's kind of fun oh yeah definitely more responsive in sport mode like i barely pressed it <laughs> yeah yeah definitely more responsive in sport mode we'll get a better acceleration up here in a little bit but ride quality is really solid it's smooth it's a good ev this is a really this is a really good EV. I'm surprised that there's not uh, more people talking about this, actually, considering uh, how solid this is. Actually, I can't turn for a while. I hate Salt Lake because <laughs> sometimes because of how these roads are. Like, I understand why they have the lanes set the way they are, but it's like, ah, I'm used to my uh, small town roads where it's uh, just a lot more simplistic. But yeah, I mean, it's quiet, it's comfortable. I like the steering. It feels pretty dang direct, actually. This is a very engaging electric car to drive. All right, we had a bunch of uh, people jaywalking. It's a thing in Salt Lake. If you live in downtown Salt Lake, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I had to literally stop in the middle of the road to let these people cross because like, yeah. But this is cool. You can just like turn right in. This turning's great. Get a little acceleration here. It's not like insanely quick, but it's, I mean, for a crossover at this price point, when you compare this to like the gas counterparts that usually have around the same amount of horsepower, this feels quite a bit zippier, that is for sure. So yeah, summing things up with the ID4, and sorry if this driving review is all over the place. I am um, struggling today, I guess, but I think this looks really cool on the outside. Interior is also really solid as well. And then, you know, ride quality smooth, acceleration solid. Uh, again, for like a $50,000 EV, I think this is a pretty solid value for everything that you're getting. And yeah, I mean, it's 
look at that it's it's great like the suspension i was just seeing over like little uh, bumps there suspension does a really good job so basically you're getting I, I i don't have anything bad to say about this like you're getting a lot of uh value for the money especially when you compare this to like other evs that are out there on the market uh, i mean this would compete against what the ionic 5 kia ev6 tesla if they could actually build a car that was affordable but they don't so we can't really talk about them ford mustang mach -E. so yeah i mean it's super competitive so let me know what you guys think about the ID4. That's gonna sum things up with our video on this ID4. Again, a huge shout out and thank you to the strong Volkswagen here in Salt Lake City, Utah for giving me some time with the ID4. Check out the inventory in the description down below. Ask for Alex if you have any questions. I'll see you.